Hello everybody and we are back with some more Frozen Frontier prequel episode. I think it's been entitled Lost Legends actually. Mm. Um, so you and these elves set out for the Frostlands. Let's take a look at this area on our map. Um, the journey there is fairly uneventful uh, in terms of encounters, but is there anything before you get to the Frostlands, which they keep calling the Winterlands, that you mm. would like to know <coughs> or ask them? Um, honestly, like I, I don't know much as a player, but I think Ferris, like the entire time, he does not stop. Like he wants to learn as much about the elves as he possibly can. Okay. And he's going to ask every like day-to-day uh, -day life like how things are arranged. They're like, are they in like cities? Do they live in trees? What, how, how does Silvis work? What, what is life like there? I think it's a big one for him. Okay, so the, their answers to that are kind of like, <laughs> ah, rumor that we live in trees is half truth as usual. Um, Tree houses? Uh, hmm. Rather than build house in tree? We have, we grow trees in certain pattern, and as they grow, we shape their path so they build houses with their trunks. Um, this does mean as you get older, your house gets a little bit smaller, uh, but it's okay. <coughs> um, so we, we have trees, houses, homes made of trees, but made of, but not cut trees, is uh, living hmm. trees. Um, right. Uh, there and then he talks about the different types of trees. You know, if you just need a house quickly, you can use this type of tree, and you can have a house in ten years. But if you want like a really cool house, like and you got the time, you can make you can plant like these redwood trees, and then slowly shape them, and it'll take a couple hundred years. But at the end, you're gonna have this like beautiful redwood house that's also like fireproof. Um, hmm. And so he talks about the different ways that you can shape trees to build your homes. And then, you know, you got to be careful because you can't really do basements. So you dig the basement ahead of time and you line it with these things and crafting the roots to go around the basement's difficult. So you're going to need to actually bring in a sorcerer in order to help mm -hmm. them, like, move the roots away from your house. And you have to make sure you distance your house from these other places. And then as the trees grow, you can, like, have them move aside and build, like, upper rooms uh, and if you're very careful, you can even build steps or you can like add steps on the outside with like typical nails if you want to be crass about it or if you didn't decide you wanted a second story until it's too late or maybe you can like grow vines and kind of talks about how you rather than um, build with nature like humans where they like destroy to create, the elves try and just create with the creation. They try and like work mm -hmm. with the woods rather than use the okay. woods as tools. And, uh, what? Oh, yeah. There's, there's, I know this might seem like a bit of a, a very small time frame to someone like you, but what is day-to-day -day life in Silvis? What do you what do? You do? And Ferris kind of gives, like, a, a brief idea of, like, what people tend to do in human lands and how it's, like, mostly work. You know, like, people tend to, so fields, I think Ferris did hunting, mostly. Mm -hmm. And he, he kind of like goes in like daily life is mostly like this kind of work and like I, I'm trying to gauge sort of what people tend to do. Um, you're this. getting the impression it's very similar sorts of things like you know, <laughs> um, his family is a group of farmers. They have their fields and they you know their fields a little bit more complicated because they're tiered. So they've got the like upper field and then the lower field is where they plant their roots and that sort of thing. And they use mm -hmm. you know this to help like you know, grow terraced, vertical terrace farming in a way that vertical terrace farming doesn't really work in the real world. Um, and they'll do these things and their methods are a little bit more efficient and the elves are actually a lot smaller than people so they don't need as much food actually. And so their lives sound pretty relaxed. It sounds like they just kind of grow food and then hang out and socialize and talk, you know, grand concepts and philosophy and make music and make art and make poetry. It sounds like some sort of like weird utopia where people are just like happy to do their jobs and everyone just gets along and spends all of their time just like socializing and doing wonderful things. It, it sounds like impossibly peaceful. Okay. 
Um, so it's kind of like if we cut all of the bullshit out of our societies. Maybe. Maybe okay. something like that. Um, but it also sounds like there's not, like, there aren't problems that arise in between people. Like, the elves all just magically yeah, get that's, along that's all what the time. I, that's what I meant, that's what I meant okay. by bullshit. Yeah. I, actually, I think he asked that. Like, how do you deal with conflicts? Um... Like, have you ever had a land dispute with another with another group? Have you ever had any sort of feud between another another family? Uh, our people are very closely knit. We all live together for a long time. We all know each other. Uh, when there is problem, which is not often, uh, we sit. We bring in other people. We all talk about it for days or weeks, um, and we come to peaceful resolution. Uh, because we must live together for, you know, a thousand years. So, uh, you know, it's bad to be unhappy with neighbor, who is probably 10th cousin, anyway. Hmm. You know, it, why be angry? Uh, work problems out. Be peaceful. Uh, occasionally, we have problems with monsters, with neighboring countries, with um, people who cannot be reasoned with. Uh, mm -hmm. These problems are best avoided. Um, mm, appeasement is good option. Um, appease for 20 years, then they die, then you get your way in the end. So just kind of let the problem go away. Uh, most problems go away mm -hmm. if you just leave them alone for a couple decades. Or new problem arise, and then that problem takes care of other problem, and you just leave alone. Uh, time solves all things. Just sit back, take your time, everything okay. Just leave it alone. Mm. Uh, some very rare time, people threaten our lives. Uh, and this is where practice of bow and arrow come in. Stay far, far away. Murder. <laughs> very sad. Oh well, their lives very small. <laughs> Move on. Uh, Ferris is tempted to ask how how elves deal with the dead, but I'm worried that then we'd have to confront whether or not Ferris is just a psychopath. <laughs> but may maybe I'll skip that question for now. I can I kind of want to leave the audience's suspense on that one as much as myself. Good. Uh. All right, so eventually you guys get to the the Frostlands. You move south yeah. of Solwick. You you cross the the Bone Run. Yeah. It, so Ferris is going to be asking questions away. If there's anything that you think is interesting that you wanted to talk about, I I'd, I'd be interested in hearing it as a player. But otherwise, yeah, we'll, we'll, the, uh... we'll definitely get to there. Okay. Um, so as you get to the Frostlands, you've been traveling for a few days with these people now. They ask you one more time. Uh, so you sure your mother never tell you story of? Um, great sorcerer named Ferris. No, I know there were elves on the southern continent. I didn't know much about them. Mm. I didn't. I don't think I learned anything about any specific elves in the south. Uh, they were... Like all elves, they were masters of the land. Um, but... Outnumbered, um, we uh, we take time. You take a few hundred years to raise two children, maybe three children, maybe four children, but you take hundreds of years to do it. <laughs> do it right. You know this person will be around for a long time. Raise the child right. Take time off work for a few centuries to, you know, make proper children into proper people so they're not so angry. Um... Humans, uh, no offense. Uh, Spread like vermin, I yes, know. Yes, they're like rabbits. Uh, you look back and all of a sudden there's a hundred of them. Um, so elves, master of continents. Uh, humans breed like rabbits and then they're just everywhere. And uh, humans were less than kind. More like orc down south. Uh, I heard the elves were wiped out when the when the world split. Is that not is that not the case? He nods. It yes 
Yes, every all life on Caldonia did. We have um, scryers. We have diviners. They uh, use orbs. They use magic. And look on Caldonia, no life. Just remaining plants that flash froze and don't move. Hmm. Yep. Completely I suppose my point dead. was more that you make it sound as though the elves were more or less wiped out by the humans before the before the continents ever split apart mm, or froze mm, over. Well, <laughs> elves are very resilient. We very smart. We very careful. Uh, not wiped out, um, but habitat territory uh, reduced, cut back. Humans, uh, Caldonia, big forested mountainous continent, beautiful place. Uh, all sorts of rare trees. Uh, humans come, they burn forests, they chop down in order to make uh, land for farming. But uh, human farming, stupid and inefficient. Um, they need chop down trees in order to make food for themselves and for grazing <laughs> land for the cows that they then just kill and then raise more cows and graze them and kill them. And it's just a big problem. Uh, much of territory badly damaged. Um, humans make big erections of stone all over the place. It is a very tacky, very crude. Um, cause many, many problems. Um, push elves out of the way. Elves do best to survive. Great sorcerer, Ferris. Um, wise man. Help keep humans at bay without without um, causing bloodshed. Uh, no like to kill. Killing is... I mean, even little soul killing, not such a good idea. So, try not to kill humans where you can. So, yeah. Uh, but, legend says, uh, mystics say some elves survived. Must be here, up here in Frostlands. Uh, but cannot find with scrying balls where they landed. So... We look around, we find them. My grand, my father, he left Caldonia uh, just a few seasons, uh, <coughs> 10, 5, 10, 15 seasons um, before Big Freeze. He grew up in mm. Caldonia, has uh, right. many tales of unpleasant doings of people says uh, elven population became very small before world froze. I see. Very sad. Hmm. Well, we should make sure we get some preparations for the Frostlands and Solwick. Mm, yes, we'll be here a long Warm time. Clothes. We need build house. Okay. Uh, not long enough time that we build, make house traditional elven way. Uh, we must do crude human house. Sure, we can we can skip past having to cut down any trees. We can just buy wood in Solwick. Oh, save you the save you the the tragedy of having to cut down any trees yourselves. Hmm. He shuffles around in one of his pockets and produces a handful of iron coins. Uh, how uh, wood expensive? Uh, not we... sure. Of, not sure. We we cut down our own trees when we. When we make our houses usually. Villages don't tend to have enough money circulating through them to buy expensive projects like that. Hmm. Okay. But it's possible. Either way, I'd say more important is that we buy winter clothes. Want to make sure we don't freeze to death on the job. Hmm. We come prepared with winter clothes. Maybe you need some. Uh, come. We, we buy wood and we build house. Uh... Hmm. Um, so you guys can go into Solwick. Uh, you can purchase some basic lumber yeah. that you'll need for a house. Yeah, and then they're they're buying me. Uh, should I get like? High, would this be the point where Ferris gets his hide armor? I think like so. He, okay. I think this so is he, where he gets you... like the thick furs that basically function as hide armor. Right, and you probably have had some amount of money from that you've been storing up your whole life. So the elves aren't mm -hmm. buying you stuff. I think you're probably spending the okay. remainder of your life yeah, savings works, on this. Sure. Um, when the lumber... I mean, if they're building a house, I can't. I can't really complain. Right. They're they're buying the lumber to build a house, and he's uh. All right. 
Yeah, uh, I just need to check something here. Come on. Load. There we go. It is. Ooh, okay. Um, so the uh, when the lumber is bought, one of the elves who hasn't spoken yet uh, casts a spell. Uh, and for the first time, you really get a, a, a hearing of her voice, and it's a female elf. Mm -hmm. um, you had a little bit of trouble telling them apart here. Most of the time, yeah, the trouble. Actually, one thing up. I want to ask. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, like, I think Ferris, when he gets the opportunity, would try and, like, sneak a glance at their faces, because they're very quiet. Yes. They and that's do. a little bit weird. Silent. Um, and I, I want to make sure they're not, like, you know, zombies or something like that. Uh, they're most definitely not zombies. At least they're not, okay. like, rotting, decaying zombies. Okay. Well, the... Do they do they look like they have some color in their faces? Their eyes don't look dead inside? Right. They, they okay. look pretty alive. Okay. Um, one of the... The, one, the woman casts a spell, and a large disc just appears above the ground. It's maybe, like, 15 feet across... So it's like mm -hmm. a 15-foot diameter disc. It's huge. Uh, and the humans in the area kind of freak out when this disc uh, comes into appearance. And then the elves, like, load up all of their heavy stuff onto this disc. And then yeah, they just kind of walk, and it floats behind them. Yeah, I think Ferris is trying to, like, temper his reactions to um, kind of seem like he fits in a little bit more with this elven group. And he, like, mm -hmm. keeps a very straight face through all this. All the humans are, like, gasping around them, and he just kind of stands there with a pretty blank expression. Like, this is par for the course and normal, and he's trying his best not to freak out at the idea of magic going on around him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and this disc just kind of floats with all the lumber, and they, they walk into the Frostlands, and this just kind of floats beside you guys for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. A couple as of days? A couple of days, yeah. Um, as the elves poke around in the area looking for what they determine is a suitable house. Uh, housing location which when they finally pick one makes no sense to you like this patch mm -hmm. of woods looks like any other patch of woods in fact it like this, this they're like ah this is the place we must build here and you're like what the fuck this is just <laughs> what what and they're like trust me trust me we know we built houses before it's fine <laughs> this is this is the right place you don't want to build anywhere else just right here and, um, also Mm -hmm. Hurry up, chat. Look up the duration of Tensor's floating disc so I know how much experience I'll get from murdering this wizard. Tensor's floating disc is only three feet in diameter and lasts for three turns plus one turn per level. So this person's is... like level 400. No, because the disc is much larger than Tensor's floating disc. This must be oh, a... Oh, it's a custom spell. A higher level, like Tensor's other floating <laughs> disc or something. Okay. <laughs> it's yes. female elves' better floating disc. <laughs> superior tense, floating disc tense Ruz floating disc okay yeah <laughs> tense Ruz superior floating disc i like this yeah um so the they build the house with you for a little while um and during the the time they start telling you a little bit about what they're looking for yeah um, so we are looking for um uh two two things um where elves arrive when they reach uh, Winterlands, and where they build home. Uh, those are two most important things. Uh, within those areas, we look for artifacts, we look for remnants, maybe we find journal. I mean, 1,500 year long time, but maybe we find journal, who knows? Uh, you know, any sort of thing, uh, preferably body, unless body is properly burned. Um, right. I is don't know. It is there knowledge about like that cinder spring? Is that known as like a hot spring or something? Yeah, but the connotations okay. around this area are a little bit more like creepy about it. Right. I'm just wondering more about like it, it is known as like a hot spring. Like it's a warm yes. place. Okay. Yes. So Ferris is going to say if they landed to the south, it gets colder the further south you go. If they wanted to survive, they likely traveled north. I, I still think that cinder spring is going to be our best bet. If we're looking for where they would have built shelter, it would be right next to the hot springs. Mm. Mm. Uh, Elven historical texts say Cinder Spring, uh, part of Great World Splitting. Uh, before World Split, no Cinder Spring. After World Split, 
<laughs> Cinder Spring. Elves uh, probably do not know it exists. Uh, maybe they stumble across it. Possible. Maybe Cinder Spring is remnant of Elven society down here. Don't know. Uh, but good idea to look. Yes, and if they're not there, then they probably die. I mean, if I was traveling north through this place and I found the hot springs, that might be the first place that I'd settle down, at least as a temporary shelter. Yeah. If there's nothing there, then they probably died further south. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Either way, I think we have a long trek ahead of us. Okay. Um, so you guys continue to build your house. Mm -hmm. uh, and they will frequently kind of like leave you to do some of the manual labor while they like go off and bring back food, um, which is maybe a little awkward because it's typically your job to be the hunter. Mm -hmm. And here they're like, no, no, no. You know best how build house this way. We never build this way. Uh, you build house, we go get food. And then they bring back, you know, various types of animals or whatever. I can't really complain too much. They are fronting the cost of the lumber. So mm -hmm. I think I think Ferris kind of accepts it. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's too miserable. It's cold here, so he's not, like, dying from, like, heat and overexertion. Like, it's probably tiring, but it's probably... Like, doing a lot of exercise in a cold place is a little bit easier, in my opinion, having done yeah. that before. It's a little less miserable than when it's 90 degrees out. Um, so then one day, while you're being left behind to do all this work... Mm -hmm. um, they just don't come home that night. Like you do, you finish your work for the day, put your feet up, kind of expecting them to come back, and they just don't show up. Like it gets dark, and they've always been back before the night falls. Something about mm -hmm. like being with family when the night falls is most important, and everyone needs to be come together to ward off the like darkness. Um, but they just haven't returned. Okay. Ferris has that night vision going for him. He, uh, he can see pretty well. And this is a little bit concerning. Like, he knows this area. It's, it's generally dangerous out in the wilderness in human lands, right? Like, humans don't do a very good job of keeping monsters at bay. Right. And he's a little bit worried that they might have run into some trouble. And I know what direction they went off, right? Yeah, they, they were... They went north. Um, and this, this time they were, like, headed east. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, and I think I'm gonna. I mean, there's there's also the snow that they would have left very obvious footprints in. So I think he's gonna he's gonna try and follow after him. You're gonna Use head out into tracking. the the night, into the dark. Yeah, screw it. I mean, it's I I don't want to wait until morning. And mm -hmm. honestly, it's probably worse if I leave at dawn because a lot of the bad predators are crepuscular, aren't they? Let's see. Uh, yeah. So you head out. I guess I, guess I don't know. So Fer Ferris is going to be uh, taking a chance on it. He's going to head out at night and see what happens. I mean, if uh, I, I, I guess his primary concern is if he waits out the night, they're more likely to be dead by the time he finds them. Mm -hmm. And he, he's, his whole goal is to try and get them back alive if he can. Okay. Uh, you head out into the night. I need you to make me a tracking check. Okay. Uh, it's wisdom, I believe. Let's track yeah, it should be perception. Oh yeah, you're right. I, I, I always forget we added that. So yeah, fourteen. Oosh, bad. So Unless start... wait, so is it actively snowing here? Because if not, they would have left very clear footprints. They would snow. have left very clear footprints. Yes. Um, so you'll get some bonuses for the clarity of their footprints, but mm -hmm. there's also like the penalties for time having passed. Then there's mm -hmm. bonuses for the number and group. I'm gonna say with a, a roll of a two. What, uh, um, wait, so if it's bone, because it's every 12 hours, and it's probably been less than 12 hours by the time they left. Uh, yeah, it's probably been a little less than 12 hours, maybe just around the 12 hour mark. And there are three of them, so that's a plus one tier bonus. There's. And I can, I, I don't know what the bonus is for like clear footprints in snow, but right. I also have like night vision, so the darkness shouldn't be an issue. Right, right. I'm, I'm basically wondering if it's enough to get a plus five with there being so many people and with the, the snow bonus. So you do, you are able to follow the tracks. They go for okay. maybe a mile uh, away from your home and then take like a sharp veer, like, you know, turning on a dime and head due south, um, which is not in the direction of food or anything like that.
I'm gonna go south. Fer Ferris like thinks it over. I'm a little bit less concerned about getting them back alive because I've got a feeling these people have been trying to screw me over. But uh, I, 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 his curiosity is getting the better of him here, and he's not he's not gonna wait until morning. He's going right now. All right, uh, you head south, and the footprints continue for a little while. Continue for a little while. Uh, and then you see a pack of wolves in your path. Um, they seem to be stopped, uh, kind of like almost on top of the footprints and sniffing at something. Uh, but they look up as your crunching of snow approaches and okay. they kind of bristle their fur, which rises. Right. Uh, so and they let out low growls. First, because uh, I don't know all the things that I own since this is before the actual campaign started. Mm -hmm. Do I have like torches and flint and steel on me? Do I have means of procuring fire right now? I guess is what I'm getting at. Uh, you definitely have your flint and steel. I don't think you have torches on you at this point in time. Okay. Do I have any like wood that I'd, that I'd be willing to burn? Like I might not have a torch. Do I have anything that's like readily burnable on my possession? Like do I, I, I might have brought means of procuring a fire with me. I don't really know. Uh, you probably have, have like a like tinder that? box with you, like the tools to set up a fire, but I don't okay, think you so brought like I fire wood. Right, yeah. Okay. That's unfortunate. Um, how best to deal with wolves? I think bears are the ones where you want to look bigger than them. Or maybe that's one where you want to lie down dead. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Alright, Ferris is going to like stand his ground. Wolves be intimidated? Let's find out. Uh, Ferris is going to try and, like, growl back at these wolves, and he's going to, like, stand his ground and maybe, like, take a step forward and draw out the saber very slowly and try and, like, they're, they're just mindless, or they're not mindless, but they're just animals, but he's hoping to, like, intimidate them. Okay. Like, I know they're predators, but they might, uh, he's thinking he can scare them you off. You know, you might be able to scare them off. Let's take a look here. Oh, man, I would die very fast in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why don't you... What does your reaction adjust on your charisma? Uh, not good. Let me check. Negative... Oh, okay. no, it's just zero. No, it's zero. Okay. Woo. Uh, the wolves don't seem to be reacting to your intimidation very well. In fact, they're beginning to, like, fan out in a semicircle uh, with, the, like, the ends of it coming around towards you in a very Have classic Have I gotten my Zulu Kopech attack. at this point? Uh, sure. Okay, so I, I do have my second weapon. Yeah. Um, hmm. This could be problematic. I assume I'm still level one. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. So they're starting to fan out. I can't outrun wolves, and if I run, I'm probably screwed. So I think at this point, Ferris is really going to stick to, like, the whole intimidation game and, like, stand his ground. He draws the Kopesh as well, and it's kind of like, go, he, he looks as badass as he possibly can, and it's mostly to try and, like, scare off these wolves and avoid the combat at all. And uh, if it turns into a fight, he's going to be, like, ready to just attack the first thing to come to him. Yeah, the wolves seem to kind of be employing a similar strategy. Uh, they aren't attacking you, but they're definitely set up in an aggressive position where if you make a move, like if you attack them, they, they'll they have you surrounded. Okay. I think what um, I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna wait, like they're fanning out, they're moving around, right? Yeah, they Once get you, a... so there's like five of them. So there's <laughs> one in front of you, and there's like two maybe 30 degrees off of them, and then like one on your left, and then one slightly on your right, but like slightly behind you as well. Okay. Ferris is going to keep looking around him. And once there's like that, once the wolf in front of him, if it like moves out of his way and he can continue going south, he's just going to start moving south very slowly and keeping an eye on these wolves as he does it. Uh, they very clearly are not budging from that position. Uh, okay. It almost seems unnatural that they are like, it almost, if you didn't know better, you would say these wolves are trying to stop you from going south. Because you are, like, trying to edge around them, and the lead one kind of just, like, moves to the side. As if it's, like, shadowing your movements and glaring at you. Trying to stop me from going south. And it doesn't look like the elves, like, the did, do the footprints continue on a little ways past these wolves? 
Uh, I'm that they're, they're, they're kind of at the edge of your information at this point. Hmm. Okay, I don't see like any it. From what I can see, it looks like they just keep on walking, right? It doesn't turn into like a scuffle or any sort of running or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Can I just stop them from going south? They did have a wizard. It's possible that she put she put a spell on them. All right, we're going all in here. Ferris is going to like growl at this leader menacingly, probably like more reminiscent of looking at an animal than anything else. And he starts to walk toward it with like both weapons in hand with like a very determined pace heading south. And it, it, as soon as like one tries to rush at him, he's gonna turn and, and swipe that shit. All right. Um, well, I think everyone here has like ready to tax against each other. So uh, <laughs> why don't we... All right. Let's, uh, I'll just give you the first attack. Okay. And then so... we'll just see how it goes. Uh, I always assume both attacks go off simultaneously. Yeah, if you're dual wielding, so first... do. Go for it. Yeah, first, first one is, um, plus one because mm -hmm. of specialization. So 16 and 17, or yeah, 17 and 11. Uh, the 17 is a hit. All right, so that's going to be D8 plus two. Takes four damage. Reopen my wolf page. Second edition. I've been doing so much fifth edition lately. Oh my god. I I just started a new campaign. It's on fifth edition too. And oh man. You know, I think what I what I really hate about fifth is um like the, the combat bloat, like the general mechanical bloat in it is kind of annoying, but what really gets me is uh I don't like the high fantasy turn they took in later editions with like monks and warlocks and four different kinds of wizards. And mm -hmm. just like it, it feels like it's meant to be run in something like the Forgotten Realms. It is. That's where, exactly, where yeah. It, yeah, and it, it doesn't feel as friendly to a more low fantasy setting it's, like earlier editions of DD were. Absolutely. It it is a the game you want to play if you want to play a crazy high fantasy setting. But yeah. I like my fantasy settings dirty and gritty yeah. and low. I mean I like um, I I'd have fun playing Warcraft or something, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not I'm typically not as big on high fantasy. Right. But it, it does what it needs to do very well. It's just I, I usually mm -hmm. like things a little less pretty and clean. Yeah. Um, so you hit four four, uh, the wolf survives, and the five wolves roar in their descent upon you. I might, so I'm not sure, but um, I think the dex bonus applies as long as you're aware of all attacks against you. I'm not uh, sure. If not against back from... attacks. Okay, I wasn't sure if that only yeah. applied if like you didn't see the attack coming. Um, so it'll be I know front and sides, but not back. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the one in front is a natural one, one on your left side. Or it's front 16 left against most, um, and then any that are on my back are 13. 13, 5, 20, and 9. So the 20 is a hit, yeah. and it's a natural 18. Uh, you said 16 AC? 16 AC. All right, so it's just barely not a crit. <laughs> um, the wolf rips into you for four points of damage. Okay. Um, uh, damn it. And now you are completely surrounded by wolves. Uh, let's just go ahead and give you the first attack because there's a lot of initiative rolls to make. Okay. Um, uh, I think I, at this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna basically like two tempo attack, but I'm gonna try and hit two wolves at the same time with this one. I'm gonna use okay. my main attack on the one that I hit before and my offhand attack on the second one. Sure. So 2d20 again. Uh, 13 for the, the main hand. 13's a hit. Okay, D8 plus two. That one takes another five. Close, but no cigar. Still ah. standing. Oh, the wolves are three hit die creatures. They are three uh, hit dice? Yep, the, the ah, lead. Shit. I might have made a mistake. Yep. Uh, so we have a 17, a 17, and a 21, and like a five and a nine. Um, and so... Whoop. 17s are just normal hits. Each one does four, and the that 21, I think, is a crit. I'm, I'm down. Right. So you make these attacks at the wolves, and they just leap at you in unison, and you can feel their fangs, like, sinking mm -hmm. into your shoulders, and things just kind of go dark for you. Yeah. Um, I think, like, falling to the ground, Ferris shouts something like, Yoon, what is this? And then just like passes out in the snow. Right. 
you do find yourself waking up mm -hmm. back in the house. Um, your wounds are bandaged very carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the larger wound, that critical wound, seems like it's been magically attended to, and there is a small note um, left beside the makeshift bed that you have, mm -hmm. uh, written in Elven. All right. So I Ferris kind of like forces himself up in the bed and, and reads the note. Um, it, it says, uh, Dear Ferris, we are very sorry about the wolves. Uh, we will come back for you one day at this house. We will definitely need it for rest, but um, uh, you cannot come with us. Uh, you are uh, awkward and gawky, uh, ask too many questions, and uh, do not know wilderness very well. Uh, you are liability. Uh, maybe one day you will grow into big-souled elf, uh, maybe one day we can have you along. Uh, this is nothing personal. It is mechanical in nature. Uh, we wish you good luck. We will come back and see you. Please do not try and follow us. Wolves are our friends. Please do not try and hurt them. Signed, Yun. P.S. If we find anything, we'll let you know. All right, I think it, Ferris like just woke up after a near-death experience, and at this point is a little uh, like he can't really do much at this point. He just kind of like falls back in the bed, and probably falls back asleep, and wakes up again sometime later. Yeah. So Ferris, the humans don't like you. You found some elves that were kind of cool, and then they like put you to labor building them a house and kind of abandoned you. Yeah. Um. How how you feeling, buddy? I think Ferris, like, once he gets up, he has a knife, and he's kind of, like, whittling a little bit, maybe. I don't know what he's doing. But then, like, he's got this, he's got, like, a makeshift table in front of him. He's got the, the letter that was written. And at a certain point, he just kind of, like, jams the knife into the paper and starts thinking up his plan for murder. And starts imagining how he plans to kill off this Yoon character. Because as, as far as Ferris is concerned, this, this guy betrayed him. And he, uh, he, he deserves something coming back his way. It's like Ferris is almost honor bound in a way. I think this is probably his more human side, thinking that he's he's honor bound to visit mm -hmm. some sort of revenge on this character. And maybe a, a good way to end this is Ferris just kind of like sitting in this hut, planning out his murder. Um, all right, and I think that is the end for our fro fro today. Uh, we've learned a little bit more about how Ferris came to the Frostlands. Now he's learned a little bit more about Caledonia and what may lie there. And I think we've also learned a little bit more about how awkward and difficult it can be to be like a half-breed or a mixed-race character where yeah. the humans don't really like you and the elves don't really like you and no one really trusts you and you're kind of abandoned and on your own. Yeah, I think a good way looking forward for, for something for the people in chat is probably Ferris... Like, Ferris's whole motivation for sticking around and wanting to, like, learn more. Like, he becomes a pretty good tracker. He learns a little bit more about nature and animals and all that. And I think his whole plan is to learn enough to travel south, get past those wolves, and find you and murder him. And that, that's his plan going forward. That's his, that's his initial reason for sticking around and finishing this house and not leaving. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has nowhere else to go back to. And I think his whole, like, immediate plan going forward for the future is he wants to get stronger. He wants to Goku it up for a little bit. <laughs> until his power level is high enough to uh, to take out those wolves and find and kill Yoon. You're very set on killing Yoon, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Fuck that guy. All right. I mean, if he had, like, been there and told him in person, that might be one thing, but left a letter? No, no. <sighs> that guy needs to die. All right. Well, that's it for today's Frozen Frontier. We will see you guys next week for a full Frozen Frontier episode with the full cast. Ooh, finally finally it, I, I found out it hasn't we haven't played since like mid-july it's, it's been just, a while i can't yeah. i can't deal with that yeah i need my fix all right that's it everybody bye-bye have a good one